Hello my soccer universe. As you may know, I may not be the greatest Bundesliga fan around. I've always been looking more towards Italy, Spain, somewhat England as well ahead of the German Bundesliga. But I have to say the Bundesliga title race and not only that, everything around the German Bundesliga is so exciting at the moment that this is the league that I'm focusing on most and what a crazy round we had. We had the plot twist that we were all kind of hoping for. Uh, we still have a very open relegation battle where anything can happen. And with that plot twist, we actually get maybe a little bit more a twist in the relegation battle as well. All the European spots are the races there are all still very much open. Who goes in the Champions League? Who uh, will go in the Europa League or the Conference League? All very, very much open and then who will become champions where it's now all in the hands of Dortmund and if you look here on the back there is no Bayern Munich because they are the big losers the big losers with Leipzig the big winners and more storylines there as well where uh, it just boggles the mind at this moment the Bundesliga is the most exciting league at this very moment there's no other league that is as exciting uh, to uh, like that and you may have realized New Jersey for me unpacking video coming in the next few weeks but I want to get the Stuttgart jersey in there as well because Stuttgart actually did also a minor miracle. Um, talking of course the Dortmund has it now in the hands because Leipzig the team that I'm wearing beat Bayern and before I want to go into that I just how crazy this CA situation is. Last week Dortmund's mayor with Schalke going to Munich, uh, said you get all get into the golden book of the city uh, if you beat Bayern or if you get points to uh, of Bayern, which of course Schalke did not do. Uh, after Leipzig won, they of course wanted to be now. When can we come to get our signatures into the golden book of the city of Dortmund? Kind of a little bit, yeah, <laughs> because the Dortmund fans have been the most vocal against Leipzig and now Leipzig are more or less handing them the title on a silver platter. That is interesting already. Uh, what's even more interesting is that of course uh, Soboschlei who scored the uh, goal that sealed the win more, more or less is good friends with Karim Adeyemi who both have Salzburg background. The Dortmund uh, staff I mean they got Holland from Salsa, 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 they got other players from Salzburg so there is actually a relationship between the Red Bull group and Leipzig or the uh, and Dortmund I'm, 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 I must say what's even more when I ordered this Leipzig jersey guess from which city this was sent from Dortmund so you know despite the hardcore fans in Dortmund being very much against the Red Bull construct and I do understand it to a, to a, to a degree although I have to say I have less problems with the Leipzig except that they're going around the rules but per se it's a good thing that there is actually um, a team a good team in Leipzig not like they went to Salzburg and they, where there was an established team and then they boxed them out so uh, there is a slight difference that I'm making there uh, however it is for me very very uh, spicy to say that Dortmund I have to thank Leipzig for potentially winning a championship and let's make no qualms about it as I said it Dortmund fully deserve if they win this title fully deserve it based on the second half of the season the first half though was not so great and if Bayern would have had a normal season I don't think a Dortmund would be champions however Bayern the whatever I call the best led club in Europe no over history yes this season they are an absolute dumpster fire and that makes also for an exciting league and I want to actually end it there and we go into the relegation battle uh, while talking about the games because there's also so many interesting storylines. But I just wanted to mention the special relationship that Dortmund and Leipzig have. And last one on this, of course, I have to say is um, I'm very happy if Dortmund should win the title that we finally have the streak of Bayern broken. This was totally necessary. However, I'm a little bit annoyed that the only team that's breaking is actually the only other team that was seriously in contention for the past few years, which is Dortmund, which are the number two. I would like to see other teams being in there as well. And 
I would not be happy, honestly, if Leipzig were the next team to break it. I would like to see another team, like a more established team to break that. But you know, for now, I'm taking it Dortmund. I'm so happy it's in your hands and I really hope you'll do it. However, I have a feeling that Mainz will not be happy to lose another time. Let's see that in a little bit. So, let's go into the other games. I mean, it was all set, set up perfectly. If Freiburg would not have gotten anything against Wolfsburg, then Leipzig could have cruised in Munich. Leipzig, with the win of Freiburg, needed a win to secure Champions League for the next year. Which was for a long time not not so good because Leipzig Rambo had, had had a rather rough start to the season as well, but uh, Freiburg get that win to nil. Günther and Peterson, who had his last home game for Freiburg, uh, actually scored a, sec a second goal as well, which was uh, then uh, disallowed for 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 a foul. Get the win, and this was really really big for Freiburg because they not only put pressure, but they also keep themselves in contention for a potential Champions League spot, which they had two crucial losses over the few weeks to Leipzig and, of course, to uh, Union Berlin. The goals came late in the 71st and the 80th. Um, we go now to the relegation battle, and I'm going to go a little bit back, back and forth. Um, let's put Hoffmann with a win over Union Berlin, and Union Berlin, at, they got the big win against Freiburg, Fre Fre but other than that, they had kind of an up and down streak, uh, losing to Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim secure their survival in the league. And similar, Bremen with a 1-1 over Köln were also now, they're absolutely secure. So, we can focus, therefore, uh, on the early games, Hertha against Bochum and Schalke against Frankfurt, where I actually, I actually want to do it head-to-head. -head. Schalke desperately needed the win there to give themselves a good shot uh, and overtake Bochum because their last game is at Leipzig. Uh, however, Frankfurt is not a good opponent, and as we saw, uh, Hertha Bochum was also that Hertha needed that win badly to also still have a shot. And it actually went in the favor of the teams that needed the win early on uh, with Tirode. Wilter, who scored the important goals for Schalke, um, was of course suspended. So Tirode steps up in the first minute. Salazar giving them the lead, and then actually they controlled it. And Frankfurt a little bit on, on, on the back foot. However, getting then a goal back, but there was a foul in the build-up that was not given, even though VAR looked at it, uh, that Kamada um, made. However, it was a clear goalkeeping mistake in there. So it is 1-1 one, one there, and at the same time, Berlin, uh, Luke Baku seemingly had given a Hertha the lead, uh, but it was also called off for a foul in the build-up. Uh, Frankfurt got better into the game uh, at Schalke and Tutor gave Frankfurt for, for, for the lead and a little bit later Toussaint gave Hertha the lead. Bad news for Schalke because that would have more or less relegated them and Hertha still have a shot. Schalke though fight back, Polter give them the equalizer, they are pushing but I think at that point Frankfurt was actually the slightly better team overall and it ends in a 2-2 draw which means that Schalke need to get a result. Uh, but at that point, it wouldn't have been that bad because you would still be ahead of Bochum, who has a, uh, a vastly worse goal difference. However, Bochum, Kevin Schlotterbeck after Stöger 94th minute, salvage Bochum a vital point, a point that will potentially mean that they, they go into the uh, playoff uh, and could secure survival this way, whereas at the same time Hertha are relegated. Big blow for Hertha. They would have had an uphill battle anyway, but now it is uh, certain. And this is a big blow for Hertha because not only do you have a city rival who came out of nowhere and is suddenly so much better than you, but you were supposed to be the big uh, town team and it's not happening. Also, I have to say, unfortunately, there were some ugly scenes between Frankfurt and Schalke fans. Frankfurt fans, I actually got over the years a rather positive picture of Frankfurt fans, so I'm really, really glad to see that Frankfurt actually decided, well, we're not going to win the U European Cup this season, but we were going to, we, they went into, we're going to be the, U we win the European Cup among Hulig hooligans, and you know, we saw already in Naples and, and so on. Not pretty scenes. I think Frankfurt need to get their act uh, with their fans together. Um, a fan base that I was very positive about, but uh, those scenes, do not look good, honestly. Well, maybe let's talk about Mainz against Stuttgart first, because 
Uh, all the results were kind of falling Stuttgart's way. You had Schalke not winning, you had a draw between Hertha and uh, Bochum, so Bochum uh, also losing points. Uh, so all working well for Stuttgart and they used their chance. Yeah, the Mainz team has already lost, lost three in a row. Ever since they lost uh, one against Bayern, they have been losing. Uh, Mainz with the last home game announcing, of course, that Onisivo is uh, extended. They took the lead in a game there was not much hap happening and it came out of nowhere that Ingwertsen gave them the lead. And Stuttgart was seriously shocked at that one. However, with a great counter-attack uh, over uh, Silas Wamangituka running at the long side of pitch, um, passes the inside, it is cleared, however the ball falls to Endo with a really cool shot out of the air, uh, it was more a stumble, he makes it 1-1 and that was all that Stuttgart needed. And then they take the lead through Girasi in the second half, uh, Fürich doubles the lead, uh, again assisted by Endo, and Endo is the guy who actually saved him from re re relegation uh, last season, and then Koulibaly adds a fourth, and Stuttgart are the big winners, because now everything looks kind of positive for them, they knew they have to get two wins, and now they have a big chance, because their next opponent, Hoffenheim, are already safe, although that's a local rivalry, and you know, both coaches in that one started on the other bench last time around. So it's not quite secure, but it looks really, really good for Stuttgart. A huge shot in the arm, everything falling their way. And it actually makes me happy too, while I would I would like to see both Stuttgart and Schalke survive. But Stuttgart is definitely, definitely a team that should never have been in a relegation battle. They have a way too well coached, uh, a well put together team, but um, it's the leadership again that is messing that one up. So that made me happy. And on top of that, I saw it was 1-1 and then I decided after the last game, because this would kind of have parallel, uh, let's go for a walk and let it play out itself. And I was so happy when I was checking during my walk that Stuttgart are actually turning the, the, this round. So good on you, Stuttgart. Let's go to the title race. Uh, in a two-parter, Bayern against Leipzig. And uh, I cannot overstate how important that game was. I also have to state uh, that the jerseys, it actually looked like they were wearing the reverse jerseys. I mean, Bayern with their new white home jersey and red pants looked more like Leipzig. And Leipzig with their admittedly interesting looking uh, a new away jersey, um, it looked almost like Bayern colors in a way if Bayern would go for blue again. So that was already a teeny bit weird. Um, I want to leave it now on the outside. I, I really don't like it when teams are debuting uh, the new jersey for the new season on the last day of the season. Uh, I like things. The 22-23 jerseys should be worn for the 22-23 seasons. No 23-24 jerseys. But, you know, that's modern times. I guess they want to make more money and sell those jerseys ahead of time. In any case, uh, so it was kind of a jersey swap from the get-go, uh, but it has to be said for the first half hour, Bayern actually really controlled the game, had already a big chance through Müller, and when Gnabry, after Müller assist, gave them the lead, it seemed like the writing was on the wall, that Bayern, we're gonna plow through. And then Leipzig got back into the, to the game, had, had, had already a pretty good equalizing chance through um, Soboschlei, uh, but it ended with a Bayern lead and I think overall while Leipzig got back into the game for the second half, the first half it was all Bayern. It was really surprising how uh, they how they did not double the lead. Uh, one was wondering, can Leipzig find their way back because they already saw it. And I have to say at the beginning of the second half, again it was, it was Bayern a little bit better but not very convincing anymore. Um, and then a corner kick in the 65th minute completely destroyed them. Uh, it was a, cor a corner kick for Bayern, where uh, Goretzka potentially was stumbled up, but the ball is cleared and there's a four on one uh, for Leipzig on going towards goal and Leimer is have having a ball. He plays it even to the outside. And I'm thinking, yeah, another Bayern players come back and they somehow gonna clear it. However, they clear it so badly that it falls back to Leimer, who equalizes, and that flipped the game. And then Leipzig was all over Bayern. Add to that that uh, their defending was atrocious. I mean, the way Pavard brought down uh, was what was it, Kunku in the box? It was a really uh, stupid foul to give up. 
And Kunku steps up, converts, and it's 2-1 Le 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 Leipzig, who never had won in Munich. And big celebrations among the Leipzig fans, but I'm sure big celebrations in Dortmund also. And then another penalty, again, uh, Maserawi with the hand. Soboslai converts that one. And I think it was on purpose that they uh, changed the, the, the flip, the Pam Pam takers, and it's 3-1 Lyle Leipzig. Soboslai says, uh, making the uh, other Yemi celebration, kind of saying, yeah, hey, buddy, we did this for you guys, in a way. Afterwards, I mean, for me, the most remarkable one was that Thomas Tuchel, could not explain why he was completely lost for words afterwards he said i have a feeling how my team is going i don't know where this result is coming from what is happening he completely uh he was very frank and saying i don't know what's happening here uh because i didn't see this coming at all kind of a little bit lost for words of course the bayern leadership now under a huge scru scrutiny because they have now gambled and they lost on all accounts. They wanted to save the triple. They are now with zero titles, most likely, because Dortmund still can stumble up and we know they want to do that. Uh, another interesting scene was that um, there was a refereeing controversy of a different kind where um, Dennis Eitekin, the top referee in Germany at the moment, uh, was called by the German TV studios by former referee Grefe, who was a very popular uh, re referee, but he's now, of course, point putting the finger in the wound and trying to find something for the German TV audience. And seemingly on the foul ahead of the 1-1, one, one, Grefe thought differently. And Dennis Eitekin was so upset that you could hear in the interview how he is basically insulting uh, Grefe right there and making fun of his weight. The 180 that he used is also, you know, when you're at 180, this means in German that you're completely upset. Um, that was an interesting byproduct. He, of course, duly apologized, blah, 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 but didn't look good. Now we're left with two games. Augsburg, Dortmund are uh, nervy, I have to say. Dortmund looked nervy and it was not helped with that. Uh, it was a rather rough red card for Augsburg but you know while Dortmund created more chances but there were some periods where Augsburg actually were dangerous um, it all changed when Sebastian Alea and what a great story that is you know he was missing the first half of, of the season due to testicular cancer uh, he scores the 1-0 the go-ahead head goal then there were still chances for Augsburg to equal it there was really Dortmund need to put this to bed they were so nervous there. However, Sebastian Alea then gets a second one and later on Julian Brandt makes it a big scoreline. And Dortmund have a big sigh of relief. They go now to their own stadium where they have been a real force. They only lost early in the season to Bremen and the 2-2 against Bayern where there was a fight back uh, where they can secure the title. So big, big, big one for Dortmund and it's all in their hands now. Of course, the, there will be. Everyone will be talking about the title, and I think the squad needs to be kept away from media, from fans, everywhere. Just concentrate. Do your thing. All you need to go is to get a win at home. And then the late game was Leverkusen at Gladbach, which I didn't see all that much. Leverkusen had a very quick two-nil lead that would have secured them a European competition for sure, at least the Conference League. However, somehow they managed to get uh, that Gladbach make it a 2-2 uh, through Hoffmann and Stindl. And, you know, after the rough exit to uh, Roma in midweek, that is another damper. And, you know, Lev Lev Leverkusen, four games in a row where they have not won the league, then the two games against Roma. I don't know. Wolfsburg and Frankfurt will be happy about that result and so let's look at the standings just ahead of that game and you see it already on the right side yes just and the red bars are also interesting where you see that Dortmund are having a better season than expected and Bayern Munich definitely worse so this is a big story again I don't want to take anything away from Dortmund the form that they had winning so many games in a row after the World World Cup that is where they deserve to win this title because Bayern were so messing up that they don't Honestly, but the story was a different one. 
at the World Cup break to 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 the worst. And the, the bars they have definitely tell a story. And also Union and Berlin and Freiburg, one of the feel good stories of the season, will make it in there. And you also see that Stuttgart is actually definitely under under underperforming for the quality of the squad. But let's look at the other side on the left side, the standings. Um, and you can definitely tell it's now very much in Dortmund's head, 84% chance. Because Bayern have also a kind of a nasty game in Köln. Leipzig are securing third, which keep that in mind. We have between Union Berlin and Freiburg. Yes, it's still very much Union Berlin's favor. But, you know, they need to match Freiburg's result on the last day of the season. Leverkusen, though now in sixth place, a win gives them two points more. And they would have more or less secured a Euro European spot thanks to Wolfsburg losing. So it's still up in the air. And even Frankfurt have a chance there, although goal difference doesn't look... There needs to be a major goal swing for that to happen. On the bottom, Bremen, Hoffenheim safe. Augsburg are not out of, out of it. There is a freak scenario where they can get relegated. Um, although goal dif 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 difference is something they they kind of say, but they could get into the promotion playoffs. Stuttgart need to win on the last day of the season, then they are safe. Point could be the, the, the dangerous. Uh, it is between Bochum and Schalke. And we see Hertha being down. And as expected, it's also kind of the final table of the season that we see here. Augsburg probably will survive, as will uh, Stuttgart. It's between Bochum and Schalke, and I think Schalke have the much harder task, as you see in the final standings. I think the, the expected standings are very much now also uh, to what the uh, current standings are. And here is the last match. They all played at the same time. That will be my Saturday afternoon program. We have, of course, Bochum against Leverkusen. Not an easy one. Leverkusen need the win. Where Leipzig against Schalke. Leipzig can cruise. And Leipzig could make the entire Ruhrgebiet very, very, very happy if they throw. But, of course, it's the last game of the season in front of your home fans. It's a different one. We have, of course, Stuttgart against Hoffenheim. As I said, that's a big one. Uh, we have now, when we look, Eintracht Frankfurt against Freiburg. Frankfurt have a small shot. But they also have the cup final. So uh, that's the other spanner in the works there. And Wolfsburg have to play at home to Hertha. So, you know, that European race is rather open. But it skews to his Union Berlin who will play at home against Bremen. Probably will win that one. And then we have, of course, the title. Dortmund just need to win against Mainz. But will, will Mainz end the season with five losses in a row? That's a big question to me. And Köln at home to Bayern Munich. Also interesting because Köln is a team that can give you some trouble, but against Bayern, they for some reason never have played that well at home. So really, really interesting last day of the season. That will be my focus Saturday afternoon. Really looking forward to that one. Any case, please let me know what you think about the title race. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and we'll see each other next week when we'll talk about the last match day in Germany. Up until then, bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!